All right, guys, I'm super excited because ARK's newest and final free DLC, Fjorder, is coming out tomorrow. So I'm making this video to go over all the details, just basically everything we know about Fjorder so far before the map comes out tomorrow. First, I'll go over some of the important information and details shared with the recent community crunch about Fjorder like the release date and the release time, as well as details about the four new creatures coming to Fjorder. Now, we don't know everything about them yet because the map hasn't yet been released, but we do know a little bit about what we can expect with these new dinos or creatures. After that, I'll go over some details about the actual Fjorder map itself and what we might be able to expect in the official version. Keep in mind, however, that the modded version of the map could be very different from the official version, just like other modded maps we've seen in the past that came to official, the devs usually make a lot of changes. Sometimes if they feel that something is unbalanced or they don't want to include a certain item or dino, it won't be in the new map. In some previous modded maps, we've seen complete areas on the map that were unfinished. Everything I'm gonna be telling you about the Fjorder map today is based on the modded version. So some of that, just fair warning, some of that may change tomorrow. All right, first up, let's look at that community crunch. So we do know that Fjorder will be released tomorrow on June 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So that's gonna be, if you're in the Midwest, like I am, that's gonna be 11 a.m. If you're on the East Coast, United States, that will be 1 p.m., I believe. And then if you're in Europe, uh, like the UK, or anywhere around there, probably going to be around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. at night. Now, they didn't say anything about there being a, like a difference between the Xbox and the PC releases. They said, all platforms June 12th at that same time. In the past, they have tried to do that. And for whatever reason, Xbox or PlayStation got delayed. So if you are on console, maybe expect a slight delay. I mean, I would be very happy to see them all release at the same time. No problems. But that has happened a lot in the past. So just kind of be prepared for that if you're on console. As far as the estimated patch sizes, we got uh, PC is going to be about 20 gigabytes. Xbox 40, PlayStation says to be determined. I would assume it's gonna be close to like the same size as Xbox, maybe 30 to 40 gigabytes. I don't have PlayStation though, so I'm not kind of a PlayStation guru. And some important information for newer players that haven't been there when new maps release. Character upload and download is typically enabled so you can bring whatever character you already have to the new map, but you will not be able to transfer in any items, or dinos. I really like how they do transfers with new maps though, because it makes the new map feel new and like everyone is starting out fresh and discovering this new map together versus it just being like another plot of land opening up and everyone's moving their overpowered dinos and all their tech in on day one. A really important note to Steam players that applies to me as well, uh, please be sure to uninstall the Fjorda mod if you already have it so that there's no mix up between the modded version and the actual official DLC when it comes out. So uninstall that and then reinstall the official version when it's released. And of course, if you are hosting any unofficial Fjorder modded maps at the moment, it might be a very good idea to wipe that or delete and rehost the server when the new map comes out. All right, so this community crunch, we got a better look at the Fenrir or Fenrir, whatever it's called, the new creature, the fourth one that was announced coming with the Fjorder map. Kind of looks like this bigger version of a dire wolf that's kind of icy and it's got all these icy spikes on it. In this recent community crunch, we actually learned that it will be tameable, so that has been confirmed, but apparently it doesn't respond to conventional taming methods. I'm not sure what that means. I'm assuming that means we won't be able to trank it and feed it meat to tame it. Maybe it'll be more of a passive tame. Maybe it could be something similar to the Amargosaurus, like very non-conventional. Uh, maybe we'll have to go steal the puppies and raise them. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I I'm excited to see exactly what they do and how we're supposed to tame this. Next up, we have the Andrew Sargus that a lot of players are excited about. It's got a whole minigun tank saddle that you can make for it. I'm excited to see what we can do with this guy. I feel like it gives us some new possibilities for PvE and PvP. As a PvE player myself, I really hope we can take these into the boss fight. And if we can't, I'm going to be very disappointed. Number three, we got the Desmodus Draculae, or just the Desmodus, this giant vampiric bat looking thingy here. It looks like if we want to find the Desmodus Draculae, we'll need to search inside of the underground caves or maybe under bridges or inside of ruins, anywhere that could possibly be dark or offer a place for them to hang upside down. I 
don't know how the taming method is going to work for these guys, but some people are saying that it might be similar to the taming method of blood stalkers. So I wouldn't be surprised if we needed to use blood packs or small dinos to tame this thing. Last but not least is the overpowered Fjordhawk. If it works how we think it works. The Fjordhawk is going to be a shoulder tame that supposedly can bring your entire inventory back to you after you die. Now, if this thing has to fly across the entire map to bring it to you, I honestly don't see how that's going to work without it dying along the way. Like, there's so many opportunities for it to die. But during the Fjordhawk trailer, we saw someone respawn, and right away when they respawned, it looked like the Fjordhawk maybe spawned near them with their inventory. So maybe it will try to travel across the map, maybe it will respawn next to you, but either way, I, ho I hope that the system for it getting your belongings back to you is good. Last but not least on the community crunch is this Mjolnir skin that you can put on your tech sword. Now in the description here it says that Mjolnir packs its own special powers and empowers survivors with supernatural might. So I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that. Like is it going to change the abilities of your tech sword when you put the skin on? Or are they just saying that like it's going to have the same tech sword abilities? Um, it does say devastate your foes with shocking ease as you exercise control over the element of lightning. I mean, the tech sword basically is kind of like that. Based on what they're saying here in the community crunch, I have a feeling that it's going to change the abilities that the tech sword has. But I guess we'll see. Now let's talk about the actual Fjordr map. Fair warning, if you are wanting to just go into this completely blind, not knowing anything about the new map, just kind of discovering it for yourself, then don't listen to this next part of the video. I'll be going over some of the things we think we know about the map so far based on the mod version, but a lot of this or even all of this could be completely different or changed in the official version. Fjordr basically has four main areas or main islands. The top island is the largest and it has everything from snowy mountains to plains to like redwood forest area. The island on the west side of the map is a complete swamp biome, so if you're looking for titanoboas for trophies or any type of swamp creatures like those fields of bufo, the frogs, that's where you'll find them. The island on the lower left is mostly a snow biome, and I assume this is where we'll find the Fenrir, the new creature coming with the map. I personally think that this biome is pretty cool, pun intended. Last but not least, you'll find a very hot volcanic environment on the lower or the southeast island. Not only does this place look fantastic, but this is the biome where you'll find wyvern eggs and magmasaur eggs. I was actually adventuring around the modded version of this map today, and I could say that one of the things I love most about this map are the ruins and some of the just massive underground areas. I think people call them realms or like dungeons, you can call it whatever you want, but there are these massive amazing caves and cave systems natural and not so natural that are all throughout big sections of the Fjordr map. Another really cool thing about this map that I realized as I was adventuring around is that it seems to be very highly inspired by not only Norse mythology but Lord of the Rings. As you adventure you'll find places that highly resemble the Mines of Moria and even Helm's Deep. And just like the Lost Island map there are plenty of really cool looking ruins and castles or even underground palace slash city looking places where I think a lot of PvE players are going to try to build their bases. There's also a lot going on underwater on this map so definitely be sure to check it out. All right that about sums up everything that I know about the new map so far. As far as artifact locations or other points of interest we won't really know for sure where those things are going to be until the final map releases. But until then, enjoy this montage of clips I took while exploring the modded version.